What we're going to do in order to demonstrate the next overrides using hooks is use a module called blog override that you'll find inside of the resource pack directory. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to jump over to the development folder and I'm going to paste the module in the sites all modules custom folder. Now if we expand this, we'll see that there's our .info file and our .module file and then a series of step files which contain progressive enhancements to the .module file. So all of these overrides that we're about to demonstrate are being made to the example blog feature module which we have in our features folder here. So if you don't have this enabled and installed, you should go ahead and do that now in order to follow along with the next steps. So this first step will override a box title. Our feature module comes with a box that displays on the blog view page. If we jump back to the browser, we'll see that box right here. It says about our blog. Now if this were a feature module that we could adjust because it's our own, it's just for our site, we could simply modify this, re-export our feature, and then add that to version control in order to push it to other instances of the site. But what we're doing is considering this feature module as one that we'll share among multiple sites. So we want to make overrides more carefully. Let's go ahead and open up the .module file. It should be blank. And then we'll open up the first step which is called blog override module override box title. And let's copy over all of the code in this step file and paste it over the code that's in the .module file and save it. So let's go ahead and walk through this code line by line. We're first creating a function that's an implementation of hook boxes box load alter. So we're just replacing the hook with the name of our module and it gets passed two parameters box which is being passed by reference which means that any adjustments that we make to this variable will get passed above to the parent that called this function and then the delta. So this box variable will contain information about our box that we can adjust you see we're adjusting a parameter of it down here. And then the delta is the machine name that we add through the interface when we create our box initially. Now we have a switch statement here that says we're going to switch on the delta. And in the case of about the blog, this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to stop and move on to the next code that's outside of the switch statement. So the adjustment here is to the box title. What I want to do is create a breakpoint here now I'm using an IDE called Komodo, which has a debugger built in. So what I'm saying here is that when this code gets loaded on a page, I want to stop it right here and take a look at the variables that are available to us. So I'm going to jump back to the browser. And now we first need to install our module. So let's go ahead and go to modules. And I'm going to do a browser search here for override. Okay, here's our module right here. I'm going to go ahead and enable that and scroll down to the bottom and click Save Configuration. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the blog page by exiting the overlay and notice just in case that the URL here is slash blog and we see now on the side that the title for the box has changed and now it says this is an altered box title. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the variables that are available to us. I'm gonna go ahead and set up our page to begin a debugging session I'm using a Firefox plugin called Easy XDebug, and I'm going to refresh the page. Now I'm going to jump back to the editor, and you see now we have this yellow arrow, which means that we've stopped. So down here, we can see what variables are available to us locally. We have box and delta, which we would expect because those are the two variables passed. And if we look at box, we can see what it is exactly that we can change in this box. We're altering the title here and you see that the title is about our blog here. We can change the description, and if we open up this options section, we can actually change the body value or the text format that's associated with it as well. So anytime you're curious what exactly you can alter through one of these hook functions, stopping the execution of the code is a great way to check. You can also use native PHP functions like verdump in order to explore the contents of a variable. Another function called getDefineVars will help you determine what variables are available to you at a particular point in the code. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this debugging session here.